Come on, man. Let's go. Let's get it. What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Terabai Reacts here. And we are back with another reaction. As I told you guys, I'm doing a bunch of theory videos today. And I have to say um, that I'm enjoying them the um, thoroughly, I should say. Um, but the last one, the connection between the, the um, that I did wasn't as what I expected. But I guess you guys will see that for yourselves if you choose to watch it. Um, but it's been an awesome day so far since I've been reacting to these. I did um, the con I did that one, the connection between the Direwolves and the Starks. And also, I did one which was really, really good theory about John killing Daenerys in Season 8 and why you would do it. Hope you guys check that out. But for this video, I am reacting to one called Who Speaks from the Flames? We all want to know that, um, if it's, you know... Pretty, um, they've said it, they say it's the Lord of Light that is showing these guys stuff from the flames, talking to people from the flames, telling them stuff. I mean, the hound, you know. <coughs> oh, yeah, I'm still coughing, so deal with it, <laughs> anyways, or or don't, <laughs> whatever this is doing. To, um, yeah, so who speaks on the flames? We're gonna jump into it. Uh, we think it's the Lord of Light, whatever, Lord of Light. Okay, so let's see what this guy has to say about this theory about who actually speaks from the flames. Pretty interesting. Let's take a look at it, see how it goes. The worship of fire is known in various real world religions. The term fire worshiper is associated with the Zoroastrian religion. Zoroastrianism is a monotheistic religion which centered around the Creator God, but also contained dualistic elements, a cosmology of good and evil eternally at odds. Fire was considered to be a symbol of purity and righteousness. A fire burns ever upward and cannot itself be polluted. In A Song of Ice and Fire, the worship of Relore seems to be based quite a bit on Zoroastrianism. Mm. In the Red Woman's fire religion, her god, the benevolent Relore, is at constant odds with a being known as the Great Other, who is the champion of darkness and the antithesis to everything that her god is. A priest of Relore can receive messages or instructions from their god by staring into the flames and interpreting what they see. Melisandre understands that this is not an exact process, and that it is an art and must be learned and honed over years. Melisandre claims herself to be one of the best among the Red Priest, stating that she has studied her art for years beyond count, and that no other in her order had matched her. From what we have seen, however, of other Red Priest, it seems that they all have varying abilities. Thoros of Mir barely even believed in his god until he discovered that by uttering sacred words he could awaken Beric Dondarrion from death. Whether or not Thoros would have the power to awaken another man from death is unclear. Makoro is another red priest in our story. Makoro seems to be quite certain of his powers and his god. He managed to save Victarion from death healing his arm and making it stronger in the process. Makoro also survived at sea, while many others perished, and his prophecies to Victarion so far have been accurate, though it is clear that Makoro knows far more than he is letting on, and things likely will not bode well for Victarion. Melisandre's abilities include being able to drink poison and not die, Shadow Binding, which includes the ability to send Stannis' shadow out into the night to do her bidding, and the ability to glamour, which according to the books, works by twisting shadows. All three of these Red Priests look into the flames to commune with their god, but there is another who has communed with the flames, but he is only mentioned once, a man that Varys met as a boy. I was in terror. 
I feared the man meant to use me as I had heard men use small boys. But in truth, the only part of me he had need of was my manhood. He gave me a potion that made me powerless to move or speak, yet did nothing to dull my senses. With a long hooked blade, he sliced me root and stem, chanting all the while. I watched him burn my manly parts on the brazier. The flames turned blue, and I heard a voice answer his call, though I did not understand the words they spoke. Yet I still dream of that night, my lord. Not of the sorcerer, nor his blade, nor even the way my manhood shriveled as it burned. I dreamed of the voice, the voice this, from the flames. This scene was, was it a god, bone a demon, chilling. some conjurer's trick? I could not tell you, and I know all the tricks. All I can say for a certainty is that he called it. And it answered. And since that day I have hated magic and all those who practice it. Though all the red priests in our story have interpreted visions from the flames, none have actually spoken to the flames and had a voice speak back to them. It is possible that Varys imagined or hallucinated this considering the fact that he was given a potion, and it was but it greatly affected pain. his outlook on life, and he seems convinced that what he saw and heard was real. Interestingly enough, the flames turned blue. Blue flame over the course of this series is associated with the others, whose eyes are said to burn like ice. Could the man have been communing with the Great Other, the enemy of Melisandre's religion, who she claims is the leader of the Others? Surely he must have some followers on Earth, just as R'hllor has. This is just one piece of evidence which suggests that there is more than one entity who can commune with mortals through the fire. The fire is not exclusively R'hllor's to own, whatever or whoever he is. In her dance with dragons, Melisandre glimpses Blood Raven and Bran through the flames. She is terrified because Blood Raven can see her through the fire, and for an instant she believes that he is the Great Other. If Blood Raven, in fact, can see Melisandre through her own flames, does this not imply? that outside magical forces can affect what people see inside the fires? The point is, when one is skilled enough to dive into the ether and seek answers in the flames, how can they know truly who or what answers them? Fire could merely be a gateway, an elemental link to the unseen deeper powers that truly move their world, a tool that anyone with the knowledge of how could use to manipulate others to do great good or great evil. Such a being would never reveal itself to all those who look into the flames, but only to a select few that it could use for whatever purpose. It seems silly to suggest that only one being could have this power. I use the word being here intentionally in order to stay vague. It doesn't have to be a god. It could be a person, or an organization, like the Church of the Starry Wisdom, or something else. I have suggested previously that Melisandre was being manipulated by the Church of the Starry Wisdom. I believe the Church of the Starry Wisdom is also influencing Daenerys. If the Church of the Starry Wisdom can send visions through fires, then it would make sense why Daenerys sees visions in the flames upon lighting Khal Drogo's funeral pyre, which she was guided to do based on her dreams. In that chapter, the flames take on magical characteristics and are described similarly to what Melisandre sees when she looks into her own flames. We have yet to meet a character who is fully omniscient in our story. No one truly knows the extent or complexity of the magical world of A Song of Ice and Fire, which weaves its way through their reality. 
Yes, so there you go, guys. Um, I was interested, very interested. Uh, and the most interesting part about that whole theory about who speaks from the flames is that there is a possibility that somebody else is there speaking, other than, um, you know, maybe there is a not there's a whatever the blue flame and the red flame i guess two different gods speaking ah <sighs> there's so many things to theorize about in this series it makes it so awesome man i can't stop giving man i never asked this much questions about about lord of the rings that's for damn sure i never asked this much question the fantasy it wasn't straightforward i don't want to say it says straightforward there were theories but there wasn't that many you know what i'm saying like i get it um i know george takes a lot from from tolkien and and it's understandable. It's understandable. It's one of his idols, you know, to say the least. So I understand why, you know, he gives he gives um, to Tolkien a lot, a lot of props, a lot of props in his interviews. He talks about, you know what I'm saying? Basically, it makes it seems like the dude invented fantasy. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so big props off to both those guys, man. They're awesome writers. Um, but I mean, Game of Thrones, I mean, the theories that, I mean, what it draws from, I mean, the, 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 the parallels with, with real life, with things that, that he draws from are just, are just awesome. Um, I, I've read a lot of stories, man. I've read a lot of stories. I'm well read in these, in these streets, in these book streets. You know what I'm saying? I read everything from self-motivation to, to, um, to fantasy books that I've done in um in the past. I'm a huge Tom Clancy fan. I'm a I'm um I'm also a huge um what's his name? Is it James Patterson? I don't remember. I haven't read one of his books in a in a long time. Um a lot of people that write fiction, man, um that are really the the the, the um the popular writers. I'm not talking about New York bestseller, I'm talking about dudes that um Stephen King that th those are the people I'm talking about that wrote books that now they're trying to make movies for, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, so, um, I haven't read those books, one of those books in a long time, but I, I, um, but I'm well read when it comes on to, that's why I can have these very in-depth analysis about shows and have a different outlook on things because I've been reading about this kind of stuff, fiction stuff, and stuff like that and how these authors how they pull from real life and stuff like that so i can give a way longer commentary on a lot of things and have way longer discussions i don't have time to sit down and make theory videos i do have theories that goes on in my head but i don't have time to sit down and make a theory video but i can do a live stream and talk with y'all about it but you know not that i could not create something like this this stuff is not hard to do you know um to make these connections um if you actually spent the time to actually do it but you know i'm a fan and i'm just enjoying the ride okay with y'all if y'all want to discuss stuff i'll soon be starting a live stream doing a live stream every week maybe sometime in the middle of the week i'll be doing some live stream just make sure that y'all look out for that announcement because it's coming I was sick for, for about a week, so everything was kind of thrown off schedule. Um, so, got a couple of more videos to go for today. So, make sure you, you stay tuned and watch those. Wait for them to come out and to drop. Okay, so, thank you guys for watching. As always, this has been Therabyte Reacts. Remember to subscribe, like, and comment on this video. And as you already know, you already know... 
ah, I'm gonna kill myself here. I'm trying not to cough on camera, and it keeps coming up every time I'm trying to talk. But yeah, bye. <laughs> Peace out, man.